All right, guys, you asked for this video, so here it is. We're gonna talk about my September sales on both Poshmark and eBay that were $40 or more. So let's roll that intro and get right into this what sold. Hey guys, I'm Kay and you've arrived in my weird little corner of the internet. Welcome. If you're new here, I'm a part-time reseller, mostly on eBay and Poshmark. I do also sell very infrequently on Depop and I do have an antique booth space in a local antique mall. Not quite sure how much longer I will have that, but that's something for a different video. Um, anyway, last week I put out a post on my community tab here on YouTube um, asking what of the three options um, you would like to see in my next video. So I had this, which was a September sales video for things that sold for more than $40. I also had a why I'm not using the real real video anymore, which took second place in the voting. You guys will be getting all three of these videos, by the way, um, just this one is first. And then the third one is a thread up fun unboxing with my daughter, you know, the way we usually do them on this channel. Um, so this what sold one and that's what you guys are getting. So definitely feel free to leave comments on any of my videos asking for a certain topic. I will do my best to get to them. Um, if it's something that I think I can reasonably do and put into a video format. Um, so yeah. Uh, I made a total of 107 sales on just Poshmark and eBay for the month of September. Um, I only have 15 to talk about today that were $40 or more. That does not include what buyers pay sh for shipping on eBay. It's just the sales price, so $40 or more. Um, and I have, I think, eight on Posh and seven on eBay. Uh, the month of September for me was the best month since May. Um, so I definitely did experience summer slowdown from, you know, June through August. Not the best for me, but also I'm um, outside more, doing more things. Cause, you know, I live in New England, so the weather is only nice for a few months out of the year. Um, so I didn't really devote as much time to reselling as I probably should have uh, to make a little bit more money. But I use this money to travel the world. Me and my daughter travel the world. I'm at five continents right now and just under 30 countries. I think I'm at 29 um, and hers is pretty high too for a 13 year old. So that's what we use this money for. I do have a full-time job that I hate. That's the story for another day. Um, but I've been there for 17 years. I'm in my 18th year now. Um, so yeah, this is just our, what we call our fun money. So sometimes I use it for house renovations, those kinds of things. But if you're into reseller content at all, what souls, thrift hauls, and maybe sometimes a little travel content mixed in there, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you here in my weird little family on the internet. Anyway, let's get back to the what sold. So for the month of September on just the Poshmark and eBay platforms, um, I had $3,351.69 in total sales. Awesome, that's obviously not my profit, but that's okay. Um, average sales price across both platforms was $31.32. Again, I sold 107 items between Poshmark and eBay, and my total profit altogether was $1,974.71, just slightly under that $2,000 mark. That's my goal most months, if you didn't know, was to make $2,000 in profit. That's a great little amount for me to keep in my savings. So let's go over Poshmark first because I had the most sales over 40 there. So as I talk about these, you guys will be seeing pictures here. That's kind of why I'm off center on the screen. Um, but the first item we're gonna talk about was this Lulu's Awaken Maxi. It was brand new with tags. I got this in a mini buyout I did with another reseller. She was local to me, local-ish, and um, she moved cross country, didn't wanna take all of her inventory with her. So I got, I think, 14 items, and my average cost of goods for all of 14 was about $7. And I sold this Maxi dress for $67. Um, great profit for me. I am happy with that. Um, I did that buyout in like the middle of the summer, so about two months or so that the item sat before selling. The next item was a pair of Levi's wedgie straight jeans. This was a small size. It was a size 24. I paid about $7 for them, I'm pretty sure, and these sold right at $40, so they just barely hit that threshold. 
The next item was another new with tags piece. It was from Designer ALC. I did pay up quite a bit for this. I think it was around $10 to $12. I found it at my honey hole. I originally was going to send this in to the Real Real, but because I'm having problems with them and no longer using their services, again, that will be in a separate video. Um, I ended up just trying to sell it myself and it eventually did sell though it took a while because I sourced this, I think at the end of last year, so end of 2021. But anyway, this was called The Jewels. It was 100% silk, so a great fabric and new with tags. It sold for $50. Paying 10 to $12 for it, not the greatest profit, but I am happy to move it and not have to deal with the real real. The next item is yet another new with tags piece. So of the eight items that sold on Posh for more than $40, um, three of them were new with tags. So that's something to keep in mind. We are now in Q4 because I'm filming this in October and I am trying to pick up more new with tags items um, because pre-owned clothing isn't really the best seller. Um, you know, for Christmas presents and that stuff. So I do take preference for new with tags items around this time of year. This I picked up um, when I went to the garment district. I had the gift card that I wanted to give away from Lori Tata here on YouTube. Um, this store is located in Cambridge, Mass. They have a traditional thrift store at the top. You will pay up for stuff up there. It's very curated, but in the bottom they have a pit that is um, kind of similar to the bins, except it's just a massive mound of clothes on the floor. So you kind of have to step on them or sit down and dig through them. Um, so my cost of goods for this item was actually zero because I had the gift card. But anyway, it was a Revolve piece. Um, not all things from this brand are sold on Revolve. This one just happened to be. This was from BCBG Max Azria. It was called the Sydney Dress. New with tags, like I said, and this sold for $50. So the entire profit, I think it's $40 after the Poshmark fees, went into my bank account. The next item that sold on Poshmark for $40 or more was also sold on Revolve. Again, same situation, not always sold on Revolve. This one just happened to be. This was a pair of um, boots from Fry. These were the Melissa short. The Melissa is a really popular style. Usually I get them in the taller style. I'd never seen them in the short before, um, but these came in a thread up box. So my cost of goods was probably around $4, $5. Um, it's usually $5.30 if I'm getting the box of 15, which is $80. Um, and I don't use any, you know, credits or anything like that. So these sold for $60. Really happy with that profit. The next item that sold on Poshmark was a pair of Athleta tights. These are the Rainier. I think that's the name of the mountain in Washington state. I'm not quite sure if I'm butchering the name of it, but anyway, they were like a red floral pattern, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm not seeing the pictures in front of me. I just have a handy dandy notebook, um, but you guys will be seeing it. Uh, I paid, I think around $4 for these. They were priced pretty low for Athleta at my thrift stores. Usually they know Athleta and Lululemon and they jack up the prices. And these sold for $49. This was an automatic offer to Likers. I am currently using Flip. I don't love it. It's very glitchy. If you guys want me to do a video about that, let me know, I will be happy to do so. But previously I was using Posher VA. I do highly recommend them, but I was trying to you know, cut costs since I'm just part-time. Um, the next item was a pair of jeans. So two pairs of jeans in this list on Poshmark. These were the Madewell stovepipe jeans in a size 25. I have been staying away from the skinny styles. I know skinny is supposedly on its way out. I still love them, so I, I would like to pick them up, um, but they haven't been moving for me, but literally any other style from Madewell has been selling. I just sold a pair this week um, on eBay for $46. They were a baggy tapered fit. Um, so yeah, definitely keep your eye out for Madewell denim. It is still selling, just the skinny styles are not doing the best right now. Um, so yeah, you'll see a picture and I'll talk about those jeans um, when I do the October video. But again, back to the stovepipe jeans, size 25. I think I paid seven, eight dollars for these and they sold for $40. And the last item on Poshmark, um, also sold for $40, the minimum threshold for this video. I did pay up for these. I'm pretty sure I paid like $12, $13. They were priced up at my store. 
Um, so not the best sale profit wise, but they're out of here. These were an UGG classic black short sequin. So they're just the normal short boot, except they were entirely covered in black sequins. So yeah, those sold for $40. So just on Poshmark, my total sales including everything not just the things that sold for forty dollars or more that we just spoke about but for everything in the month of september it was one thousand three hundred twenty seven dollars in total sales not the best month for me poshmark is not my main bay anymore um ebay took over that like two years ago um, i sold 54 items in total on poshmark making my average sales price or asp twenty four dollars and fifty seven cents I like to be $30 or more, and I was overall across everything I sold in September, but for just Poshmark, I was under that, but that's okay. The total profit for Poshmark was $771.27. Okay, so let's move over to eBay, and like I said earlier, I had seven sales that sold for $40 or more on eBay, and this does not include what buyers pay for shipping. I do not offer free shipping on my eBay store at all ever. So buyers are always paying a calculated rate for shipping and I did not include that in what the item sold for. Um, so the first item is a t-shirt. I'm pretty sure I showed this in a thrift with me at some point on my channel. I was really surprised by the comps on this because it just looked really unassuming. Um, it was a pink tee and on the front in like a graffiti style spray paint, it said sus boy. Um, so it was a sus boy and little peep collab little peep I think is a rapper. I'd never heard of them But I don't know the t-shirt I guess looked interesting enough for me to grab it and look up comps and it sold for $60 I'm pretty sure I paid five dollars or less for this So I'm super happy with the $60 sale the next item is another piece that came from that same mini buyout I talked about on the Poshmark side um, so my cost of goods was around seven dollars. This was an activewear brand that I don't find too often But usually moves pretty fast for me. It's called Varley This was the Manning ribbed sweatshirt and this sold for forty nine dollars The next item was a brand that I was super excited to find because it was on my reseller bolo list and I got to check it off I always love when that happens let me know if you can relate down below. It's like the best feeling as a reseller. Um, it didn't have the best comps, um, but I was just so excited to find that brand finally that I didn't really care. I picked it up anyway, and I actually thought it was a blouse, but apparently it's a dress. It's a very mini dress. The brand is Jen's Pirate Booty, and this was called the L Matador dress, super boho. It was like white and gauzy material, um, and this sold for $50. Can't remember what I paid off the top of my head, but I want to say it was probably $8 or less. Next is another item that I almost sent into the real rail, but they were a little bit flawed, so I decided to try and list them myself. They did sit for a little bit, but they finally sold for $60. Um, I think my thrift store priced these really low because they were a little bit flawed. Like I said, these were suede shirling sneakers from Prada. They did have a little bit of a platform, 100% authentic. I wouldn't sell them if they weren't, uh, but they just had a little bit of stains on the suede. So I cleaned them up as best I could, gave them a little cleanup on their midsoles with a magic eraser and listed them. I think I listed them around $80 and got this $60 offer. Super happy with that. The next item that sold on eBay was a Victoria's Secret Pink and Spiritual Gangster collab. I recently shared this in one of my Friday Thrift Finds videos. It was a very neon multicolor tie-dye print and it was a hoodie sweatshirt except it was a dress. I remember commenting on the video about how long it was and come to find out later when I was doing research that it was a dress and not just a sweatshirt. Um, and it was brand new with tags. I don't remember what size it was. I think it was a small or extra small. And comps looked really good. Some of them that I saw went up to 125, but I didn't really want to sit on it for a while because it was pretty big being a full hoodie dress. Um, so I happily accepted a $65 offer and I think I paid about $10. The next item I will talk about when I do that The Real Real video, um, but we'll just kind of glance on it right now. So. They made um, some very glaring errors, and not just one, but a few. Um, and I complained about it a lot. I, I, yeah. 
<laughs> it happened. Uh, I went full on Karen. You know, sometimes you just have to stand up for what's right and not let, you know, big corporations walk all over you. I deal with that at my full-time job. I'm not going to deal with it, <laughs> you know, in my free time. Uh, so I complained and I ended up getting a credit from the real rail for all of the issues that happened um, and I used that credit to buy I think like four or five things my average cost for the four or five things that I purchased I think is four dollars and nineteen cents because I used all of my credit and then I paid like I think twenty five dollars something like that um, but I did pick up these Louis Vuitton loafers from there never found that brand in my area before I don't really find designer all that often, to be honest with you. Um, there are some resellers in this area that I know of um, that always scoop up the good good before I can even get there and working full time, I don't have the most free time to go and hunt the same thrift stores every day for the new stuff. So anyway, I paid about $4 for these and they sold for $125. They were a men's like Oxford style loafer. Um, and I think they were a size seven in men's, so not the biggest men's size. If they were a bigger size, they might've done a little bit better, but I'm happy with $125. And the last item we're gonna talk about today in this video is another item that will be talked about in a future video, but this one is my goals video. I had a goal for 2022 to sell something for $300 or more and this sold for $400, so I hit that goal, so we'll touch on that when I do that video. It'll be coming out, I think, next week. Um, but this was the Canada Goose parka that I got in a ThreadUp box. ThreadUp came out with a men's designer box. It's $140 for only four items, so they're $35 a piece. I think this is the last one to sell. I'm pretty sure I sold the other three. I got a Prada wool sweater, um, that feeds into the issue with the real real one of them anyway I had a Burberry wool sweater which I sold I think on eBay and I can't remember the fourth item but I'm pretty sure those I know the two sweaters sold I can't remember the third one but I'm pretty sure whatever it was sold and this is the last one and it sold for $400 this was the Langford parka it was a men's style, but it was a, also an extra small, so it could have fit a woman as well. It fit my daughter. I mean, she's a teenager, but I'm pretty sure it could have fit a, you know, an adult woman as well. Um, but so I listed it on Poshmark under both men's and women's, just on eBay under the men's category, and I had it listed for $800, but I really wanted it to move, and I'm pretty sure I got that box you know, at the tail end of winter. So people weren't really searching for such a heavy coat like that. Um, but I sent out aggressive offers of 50% off because I wanted it gone because it takes up a lot of space. It's a huge jacket, a parka, and I have a very small house and all my inventory is stored in my shed. I didn't put that Canada goose in my shed though. It was hanging up in my laundry room and I was tired of looking at it every single day when I went in there to print labels. Uh, so yeah, I sent out an offer, someone accepted it. They're also in New England, which is awesome because it didn't go too far, so shipping wasn't super expensive. Again, I paid $35 and I get to check off that goal on my list, tick. Last year, my highest sale was a plush that I sold for $250. It was a Build-A-Bear Halloween plush. It was a werewolf and he had like glow-in-the-dark patches on his ears and on his paws and that went to Canada for $250 so I wanted to up that a little bit and I'm happy that I finally get to say that I've sold something you know for more than $250 and this time it wasn't a plush okay so in total on the eBay platform my total sales were $2,024.69 this number does include what buyers pay for shipping that's just how i record it in my spreadsheet um, but when i give you guys the sale prices i don't include the shipping if that makes sense hopefully it does uh, i sold 53 items so one less than i sold in poshmark for all of september making my average sales price or asp 38 dollars and 20 cents um, that obviously means that I sold quite a few of low dollar items because, you know, I had a $400 sale, $125 sales, a couple in the 60s. So yeah, the little dollar sales definitely brought down my ASP. 
I'm fine with that. It's still money in my pocket. And the total profit on the eBay platform for September was $1,203.44. So yeah, that's everything that I have to share with you guys in this video. I hope it is helpful to see what items are selling for people at this time of year. It's October 2022. This is for September of 2022. Again, I'm part-time, so I don't have as many sales as some other people you might watch on YouTube. Um, but I feel like this gives a a little bit more of a realistic perspective for someone that isn't full-time you know they might have kids they might have other obligations and can't devote a whole 40 hours a week or whatever to this career this job so this is a side hustle for me if it is for you this could be a good channel for you to watch um, even if you're full-time it could still be a good channel to watch I try to share as much information as I have I, as I can um, I'm not super into fashion um, I wear graphic tees and leggings most of the time I'm trying to get a little bit better but I do love selling stuff I do a lot of research I consume a whole lot of content here on YouTube for from other creators um, so I will pass on whatever knowledge that I have but yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out here on YouTube to know what type of content you enjoy seeing from me. Also, if you enjoy this format or have other suggestions for these videos in the future, please leave them in the comments down below. I read every single comment and I pretty much always respond to them as well. If you guys want to see maybe a different threshold or if you want me to separate Poshmark versus eBay so that I can talk more about some of the smaller dollar sales that I make on those platforms every month, I'm happy to do so. So just let me know what you want to see and with that that's all I have for today's video thank you so so much for watching as always if you're into reseller content of any kind what solds thrift hauls all of that fun stuff please consider subscribing like I said earlier I would love to have you here in my weird little family on the internet and I hope to see you next time bye guys